Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. Sometimes when you think the devil is winning, no good is being accomplished, God is about to do the biggest thing you have ever seen. We're in Acts chapter 16. We're in one of my favorite cities. Now, I've never personally been there, uh, but it is the ancient city of Philippi. It is the city that the book of Philippians in our New Testament is connected to. So we know that a wonderful church was built there. When Paul first showed up there, it didn't look so good. Uh, it was a moral, uh, morally corrupt place. It was a place of immorality and idolatry. Uh, they called Philippi Little Rome, and that wasn't a good thing, not for Christians. Uh, this was a place that it would seem the devil had a stronghold in and a stranglehold on, and yet to God be all the glory, uh, the gospel bo- broke through. Light came. The power of God is mightily seen, and we're on the verge of that in our study. Now, let's pick up where we left off the other day. You remember uh, the little prayer meeting that seemed so inconsequential out on the riverside, on the bank of that river. Lydia got saved, and somebody said, well, that's nice. We have a convert. Good. And then immediately the devil began fighting. The demon-possessed girl started following them around. And so Paul had to cast a devil out of that girl. And then immediately in verse 19 we read this, And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Let me pause just a moment and point something out to you. They were accusing them of bringing trouble when, in fact, what they were bringing was blessing. Isn't it amazing how people call good evil and evil good? We're seeing that in our world right now. Why is that? Because everything's backwards to people who reject truth. Everything's upside down when God is not in his rightful place. And they even said, we're Romans. This is not for us. Your religious system is not for us. Friend, I've got news for you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not for one geographical location or one ethnic group, one language group, one cultural a setting. No, no, this is for all people. And so they, they didn't understand really what was behind this was the gospel was cutting into their financial profits. Verse 22, and the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Can I ask you a question? Does this sound positive at all to you? (laughs) Does it look like the Lord's really breaking through in Philippi? Do you think Paul envisioned the kind of church that would be there when this was all over at this moment? I have no idea. But verse 25 is one of the most beautiful verses in all of scripture. The Bible says, and at midnight, in the middle of the night, uh, literally and figuratively, at this dark season, At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. I love this. It wasn't just the prisoners that heard them. God heard them too. In the next verse, God's going to send an earthquake. In the verses that follow, God's going to shake a family and shake a whole city. We'll come back and study the rest of the story, but let's just pause and meditate on this today. Uh, How is it that Paul could show up in a city with nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ and the indwelling Holy Spirit, and suddenly turn an entire city upside down for Jesus Christ. Is it possible, do you think, that believers today in big cities and little villages and towns, wide spots in the road, uh, in places all across our country and around our world, could make a difference where they are? Absolutely. How? How do you impact a city when sin has 
pervaded everything. When Satan is fighting against you and when you are in the minority, how could you impact your city? Well, let's just take this as our pattern from Acts chapter number 16. Uh, What did Paul do? First of all, if you back up in the chapter, he obeyed the Holy Spirit. Do you remember? It was the Holy Spirit who led him there. Maybe sitting in jail, we would be tempted to say, Lord, are you sure we got our directions right? Did we understand one another? Oh, yes, you're exactly where God wants you. So if you want to impact your city, first, you must be willing to obey the Holy Spirit no matter what it costs. Then look for open hearts. Uh, Every door will not be open. Uh, Every heart will not be open, but some will. You remember in verse 14, Lydia, the Bible said her heart the Lord had opened. So be on the lookout, be on the spiritual alert for those whose heart God has prepared and God has opened. Remember the Old Testament prophet, who hath despised the day of small things. Every big thing God ever does begins somewhere. It must begin in someone, so look for open hearts. Then if you want to impact your city, not only must you obey the Holy Spirit and look for open hearts, you must give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. Uh, Don't debate every every issue of the day. Don't deal with everything. Deal with someone. Deal with the person of Jesus Christ. In the early verses, seated by the riverside, what did Paul speak of? Jesus. When he encountered this demon-possessed girl, what, what did he speak of? Jesus. He cast the devil out in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you get to the Philippian jailer later in the passage, what's he going to deal with? Jesus. Do you know why that is? Everybody needs Jesus. Look, everyone needs to hear the same message. It may be a a rich person like Lydia. It may be a poor beggar girl. It may be Jewish believers gathered in some place. It may be Gentiles and Romans who are persecuting. But everyone needs the same message. Everybody needs Jesus. So if you want to impact your city, obey the Holy Spirit, look for open hearts, give them Jesus, and then depend on the power of God. This is so important. It was not the power of personality or oratory or rhetorical skills. It was the power of God. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul knew it, and we must learn it. We must stop leaning on our own understanding, thinking we can scheme our way and strategize our way into a city The Lord must move into that city, and we must bring him there. And so depend on the power of God. Then I would say this, keep praying. One of the things that struck me as I studied this this passage in Acts 16 about Philippi is everywhere you turn, there's prayer. Uh, Do you remember where it all started? Paul was praying. God spoke to him through prayer. When they showed up at the riverside, it was where prayer was wont to be made. When they encountered the the damsel possessed of a demon, where were they going? They were on the way at the hour of prayer. When God broke through in the jail in the middle of the night, what were they doing? They were praying. Friend, don't give up praying now. Uh, Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. If you want to impact your city, keep praying. And by the way, I would point out to you, they weren't praying for the prison doors to open. They were praying for God to open the city to the gospel. Maybe we need to stop praying to get out of difficulty and start praying instead that the Lord would move in a mighty way around us. And so, let's review. Obey the Holy Spirit. Look for open hearts. Give them Jesus. Depend on the power of God. Keep praying. And one more, live full of praise. The most beautiful and powerful testimony is a praising Christian. In verse number 25, in the middle of the night, they weren't just praying. We can see that. We can understand them praying but they were also singing praises. Remember, God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we praise, the power of God comes. The Lord can use you, my friend, to impact your city. Read Acts 16, apply it to your context, and ask the Lord Jesus to use you in power right where you are. Though no more scripture is being written, the story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment. And we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why Enjoying the Journey exists, to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, 
Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey, but we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.